Okay, geometry, section 3.8 is a really long section. Your authors put a ton of, of material into this, and they're, they're doing it all with the idea that you guys remember a whole lot from Algebra 1 that I think we might need a little bit more time with. So I'm breaking this up into two sections here. First one is 3.8a, and I'm calling that one just slope and equations of lines. We'll get to parallel and perpendicular lines and how it uh, relates to all of this in the second part of 3.8. So the first thing I wanted to review with you guys is something hopefully you learned in the past the definition of slope. When we're talking about a line, each one has a unique slope, and that slope is a numerical measurement of how steeply that line is either rising or falling. So when we talk about the slope of a roof, for example, or the slope of a snowboarding hill, something like that, in math we try to be numerical in measuring that slope instead of just saying, hey, this one's really steep and this one's maybe not so, so steep. Right here, I want to go through the formula that hopefully you guys remember from last year in algebra for for the slope between two points. That formula is going to be y sub 2 minus y sub 1, so your second y coordinate minus your first y coordinate, divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And I'm hoping that all of that notation of x's and y's and 1's and 2's looks familiar to you guys because it was very similar to something we talked about earlier in the year when we did the distance formula, I believe in section 1.4 in this book, and the midpoint formula in section 1.7. Now a couple of other things to think about. You might have seen this in the past. Sometimes in math we will use this little triangle symbol, which is actually the Greek letter D or delta, and we'll put that in front of a Y, and what that means in higher levels of math and science is change. Change in Y divided by change in x. And another version of that formula, you guys probably remember, that can come in really handy when we're graphing lines and using slope, are the words rise over run. Rise is always indicating how far up you go uh, from one point to the next, and run is always indicating how far to the right you go. But you do have to watch out because those numbers can be negative sometimes, which would mean the exact opposite. Okay, I think it would be a really good idea if in your notes you drew me four really quick, very simple graphs. They don't have to be anywhere near as complicated as mine right here. And we talked about the four types of lines that exist. The first one we're going to draw is one that does this. So that is a line right there that we would consider to be a rising line. But it's important to realize that we always read lines from left to right the same way you read words in a book there. If you read this thing from right to left, you could actually make the argument that this line is falling. But no, we always read from left to right. And in any line that is rising, m, your slope, I didn't mention that before, the variable we already always use for slope is m, m is always going to be positive in a line that is rising from left to right. We'll get into the math of why that is in a little bit. So the second type of line, I bet you all could tell me, would be one that looks maybe something like this. And again, if we read it from left to right, this is a line right here that is falling. Well, if a rising line has a positive slope stands to reason that a, that, that a falling line is going to have a slope that is negative. All right, every falling line from left to right has a slope that's negative. And now for the two weird cases. Okay, we've got a line first that was rising from left to right. The second was one that's falling from left to right. The third possibility is a line that isn't rising or falling as it moves from left to right, and that's going to be a line that looks like this. So this is what we are going to call a horizontal line. And as far as the slope of a horizontal line, well, it can't be positive because this line isn't rising, and it can't be negative because this line isn't falling. So we need a number that is neither either positive nor negative, and there's only one number that does that, that number is zero. So the slope of every horizontal line is always going to be zero. And now for the fourth type of line, there's an easy question I can ask and a hard question I can ask. The easy question is, what's the fourth type of line? One that is not rising, nor falling, nor horizontal. And if I phrase the question that way, most people guess correctly that this fourth type of line is a vertical line. So let's label that one as vertical. But now the hard question is the following. The slope of a vertical line can't be positive, can't be negative, and it can't be zero. So what kind of number is neither positive, nor negative, nor zero? 
The answer is not a number that exists at all. What we have with a vertical line, guys, is a slope that is undefined. So when we talk about a vertical line there, the slope does not exist. There is no slope at all of a vertical line. And once again, we'll get to the reason for that in just a second. So these are the four types of lines, everybody, and that's what their slopes are always going to be. Let's keep all that in mind as we move into some questions like this one right here. And I suppose I could zoom in on that, make that a little easier to read. Okay. Let's dive into these problems. Now, you've been given a pair of points right here, five, negative three, and negative one, zero. One thing we should know by now from geometry, guys, is that through any two unique points, there is only one line that connects them. So that's why the directions say to find the slope of the line. The meaning there's only one. So we're going to use that formula we wrote down a moment ago for slope. Guys, the more you write this formula and the more you make yourself say it out loud, the faster you're going to have it memorized. y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x2 minus x1. That's a formula we want to have memorized. So here we go. Now, because it's our first problem, wouldn't be a terrible, terrible idea to label everything. This first uh, uh, five right here is our first x value. So that's x1. This negative three here is our first y value. That is going to be y1. And then we move on into the second ordered pair, where negative one is our second x coordinate and the zero at the end then is our second y coordinate. So hopefully you won't need to take the time to label these on every single one of these problems. But since this is our first one, that's probably a good idea. So up in the numerator, we start with y sub 2, which is 0, and we subtract then, because that's what my formula tells me to do, we subtract y1, which is this number right here. So technically, we're subtracting negative 3. And I could write it this way, 0 minus negative 3, but most of you guys at this level are going to catch yourself and you're going to say, oh, rather than subtracting a negative, I'm just going to make that plus. So even though that looks like 0 plus 3, and it looks like we're adding, which we are, what we really are doing is subtracting a negative. Then down in the denominator, x sub 2, which is negative 1, minus x sub 1, which is 5. Okay, I think we can do this without a calculator here, everybody. 0 plus 3 is going to get us a 3 on top, and a negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6. Now, one thing you're always going to have to do with your slope answer is put it in simplest form. So I'm hoping everybody can see this here, that 3 over 6, we can divide out a 3, and we're going to end up with 1 over 2. What I do want to point out, though, is the fact that this slope that we had right here has a negative in the denominator. So that means that my answer is going to be negative as well, but where to put that is worth talking about. It is perfectly fine if you want to leave that negative in the denominator right where it was. I will tell you, though, that it's also okay and more common to move that negative up into the numerator. It's also possible and okay to put that negative right there in the middle, but I have to warn you guys, when you put a negative in front of a fraction, most people tell me when I ask them that that means that both the numerator and the denominator are negative. And that's not correct, because if that were the case, negative 1 divided by negative 2, let's ignore that for a minute, a negative divided by a negative would actually be positive. So my recommendation is keep that negative sign in the numerator. I think that makes more sense than having it in the denominator when we're graphing, although we do want to be able to switch back and forth between the two. But that's our answer here for 2a. Now, what we're going to do next is really just a quick check, not something I would want you guys to do and not as a way to come up with the answer. But if I were to do a very quick sketch of what this line would look like, it passes through the point 5, negative 3. So from the origin, I would go 5 units right and 3 units down, and it gets me somewhere there in the fourth quadrant. You'll notice, guys, I don't care that much about the exact location of that point. Our second point, negative 1, 0. So from the origin, I go one unit left, and I don't move up or down at all. I'm on the x-axis. There's my second point. Now, there is only one line that passes through both of those two points here, and that's that's what that line looks like. And I would ask you guys to think now, what's that line doing from left to right? This is a falling line, it goes down from left to right. And therefore, I think it makes a lot of sense that our slope here 
is negative. Just like we got done talking about right on this graph right here, every falling line must have a negative slope. So here we did the problem the right way. We got a negative slope and then we looked at the graph right over here and saw, oh yeah, that line is actually falling. So that doesn't guarantee that we got this problem right. However, if we noticed that the line was rising or horizontal or vertical, that would have guaranteed that we got it wrong since we came up with a negative slope. So that's just a quick way to check your answer. Let's do a second one. And if we were live in class, I would ask you guys to do this one on your own right now. So feel free to pause the video and maybe give this one a shot on your own and then come back and see how you did. All right, hopefully you tried that. Let's go to our formula now. M, once again, is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So let's get rolling here, guys. M equals y sub 2, our second y coordinate is 3, minus our first y coordinate, which is negative 9. So rather than minus negative 9, we'll just make that a plus. Down in the denominator, x sub 2, our second x coordinate is positive 4, and then minus x sub 1, which is a negative 4. So again, minus a negative becomes a plus. That's going to give us a 12 in the numerator and an 8 in the denominator. And we'll look to simplify this by dividing out a common factor. Biggest thing we're going to see there is a 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and that's our answer here, guys. So, what kind of line are we dealing with? Since our slope is positive, this better be a line that is rising. Let's check this real quick. Negative 4, negative 9 means I go from the origin left 4 and down 9, so there somewhere. And then 4, 3, right 4, up 3, right about there. And as I draw the one and only line that connects those two points, we can see that that line is rising, which makes makes me feel pretty good about my answer right here because my slope was positive. All right, that was B. Let's take a look at a third example. And whoa, why did that happen? I think I can fix this. Sorry about that. All right, guys. Now, again, I would encourage you to pause the video and try this one on your own. Something interesting happens here. See if you can find it. All right, guys, so m is equal to, let's do the formula again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So out of these four numbers here, y2, the second y coordinate is 3, minus y1, the first y coordinate, huh, which is also 3, all over x sub 2, the second x coordinate is 4, and then minus x1, which is a negative 7, so we'll make that a plus. And when we go to simplify, something interesting happens. This is now 0, all divided by 11. And one of the things I'm hoping you guys remember from the last couple of years, 0 divided by any other number, anything other than zero, is always equal to zero. So that's our answer here, guys. But I would ask you to think about, back to our first slide, if your slope is zero, what kind of line does that mean that we are dealing with? The answer to that should be horizontal. And if I plot this thing real quick, I'm hoping we're going to see that. Negative 7, 3. So left 7, up 3. Got it. And then 4, 3 means right 4, up 3. Oh, and I noticed then that when I draw that line, it looks horizontal. Now, why is that? One of the things that I'm hoping you noticed, the two y coordinates in this point were exactly the same. And the y coordinate of a point tells you its height. So if you've got two points here and here that are at the exact same height, they both have a y value right there, in this case of 3, that guarantees that this line is going to be horizontal, so the slope of 0 makes a whole lot of sense. One more here, guys, before we move on to something new. Let's take a look at D. Negative 7, 3, and negative 7, negative 2. Go ahead and hit pause. Try this one on your own, please. Okay, let's check it. M is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Let's keep writing that formula until we have it down pat. y sub 2, your second y coordinate is negative 2, minus y sub 1, the first y coordinate, is 3. Down in the denominator, x sub 2 is negative 7, minus x sub 1, which is also negative 7. So minus negative 7 becomes 
plus. That is going to give us a negative 5 in the numerator, uh-oh, and a negative 7 plus 7, which makes 0 in the denominator. And this is one of those things that no matter how many times math teachers that you've had over the years have told you this, you guys seem to have a hard time holding on to. Any number divided by 0 is always going to be undefined. Okay, the other thing you could say right here is that this line has no slope, but division by zero doesn't exist, everybody. It's like trying to take a bunch of money, let's say a million dollars, and dividing it up among zero people. You can't cut it into zero pieces. It's got to go somewhere there. So anything divided by zero is undefined, and that should tell us that our line is vertical. Let's check real quick. Negative 7, 3 would be roughly here somewhere, 7 left and 3 up. And then negative 7, negative 2 would be roughly there somewhere. And the only line that passes through both of those two points, because they have the same x-coordinate here, is a vertical line. And the slope of every vertical line is undefined. So guys, those four examples that we just did, A through D, that kind of illustrates the four different things that can happen when you go to find the slope of a line that passes through two given points. All right. Like I said, there is a lot of information right here in this section. I'm going to stop this video right now, and then when we come back with part two of this video, we'll start talking more about the forms of linear equations.